Hello everyone, this is Amity Sensei. Today I will show you how to make a logo like this using Illustrator for iPad. I've actually talked about how to turn a sticker in one of my previous videos, but I didn't really go into how to use Illustrator itself, and that's what I want to cover step by step in this video. I also leave the link to that video I just mentioned in the description down below, so feel free to check it out if you're interested. And this tutorial is going to be pretty straightforward, so feel free to give it a try and follow along if you can. So first, create new at the top left here. Select this one that says A4 under the print tab. The size can be anything, but I'm going with A4 as I want to print it out later. I have a draft of this logo of the bear already here, and you can also create yours by hand or use a different iPad app. And I usually use Procreate to draw mine, but regardless, remember to first draw a draft like this. Once we have it, we want to move it over here on Illustrator, which is where we'll be tracing it over. You can place your image like this by adjusting its position, so make sure to place it in the center like this. Then you should have your image under the layer tab as you can see here, and now we want to set a drawing mode. To do it from the property panel on the second option from the top right, there is this drawing mode, so switch it to this one that says multiply. Once you tap this one, some options should pop up, but go ahead and choose multiply. Now lower the opacity and set it around the level where you can see your draft clear enough. Around 20 to 30% should be good, I think. Now we'll be tracing over here, so let's create a new layer. Tap the plus button to create a new layer above and bring it under here. So now you should have your draft at the very top and the blank layer under that. For the draft layer, go ahead and lock it so it stays there. Now let's work on the background. Grab this rectangle tool and choose any color of your choice. I'm just going to select orange this time so it's easy for you all to see as well. As you drag it like this, you'd have a rectangle that stretches in all directions. So adjust it in a way that covers your artboard nicely. We want to make sure the background is fixed to its position too. So tap this lock button right next to the rectangle here to do that. From here we'll start tracing. When tracing, we'll use a pencil tool. You can find it on the fourth option on the left here. This is a pencil tool and using this, you can draw any path just by tracing. Right now I have gray for the color, and go ahead and trace half of this face of the bear with a pencil tool in gray like this. In the second option on the left here, you can find this thing called anchor points, and as you apply it, you can see these dots display as you can see. And if you want to change the shape later, you can do that just by moving these dots using an apple pencil. Also, if you have a dot you don't really need, just click on this minus button under here and it will be gone. This tends to be kind of difficult to do in other so-called Illustrator apps including Procreate, but you can alter the shape easily with these vector apps like Illustrator. Once you're done with this part, we want to have the same thing on the left side too. So go to the panel under here and tap the second option from the right, which is the copy button. So tap copy and create the two of the same shape. Now go to the line panel on the right and you can find this option to flip horizontal. So tap this and it will be flipped horizontally, which lets you create the same shape on the left instantly. Now make sure to put it in the right place. Once you've done that, we want to combine them together, so select both and go to the panel on the right. On the fourth one from the top, this one right here, this is the option to merge shapes, and this time select the very top one that says merge all. This way the shapes you combine get merged. Now go to the very bottom from here where it says convert to pass. Now the two objects should be merged completely, where if you double tap here, the borderline in the middle is gone like this. You could stretch and shrink it, or make it bigger and smaller. Now let's work on his ears and eyes in the same way we did earlier. First create the right half, copy it, flip it horizontally and move it over to the left side.
Once you're done with that part, select his ears and the body part, so you should have three layers in total. And from the panel to merge shapes, select merge all, go to the very bottom, and tap convert to path. Now they should be converted as a single object. Next is his eyes. For the eyes too, draw the right one first, flip it, and bring it over to the left side. Next, let's work on the white part of his nose. Grab an over tool and just roughly create a circle like this. Place it in the center and double tap it. As you do this, you can adjust the shape and position using these anchor points, so alter them to make it look like a nose. It can be a bit difficult to work with these anchor points first, but I'm sure you get used to them after a few trials, so give it a try at least several times. Now let's work on this mug under here. We'll use a pencil tool for this part, it's the one we used earlier. Just like this, draw the body part of the mug first, and then its grip. Once you do that, it should look something like this. Let me hide my draft. You can see both the gray and white parts, and what we want to do from here is to cut out the white area and leave the gray area. So let's work on it. How we do that is first select all. Then as we did before, go to the panel here, but this time instead of merge all, we'll choose the second one that says subtract. As you tap it, the white part should be cut out as you can tell. And this is what subtracting does, meaning cutting out with the objects on the top. With that, the logo now should look like this, with his nose and the mug are gone. You can actually still move around them, but now we have the background. Now we need to add the black part to his nose in the coffee cup. So place the over shape like this. Once you're done with that part, let's sit and have this logo in the same color. This time we'll just make it black, so say his nose, the mug, or the coffee cup as well as his body black in color. Then select and group them. As you group them, they will turn into one single object, which makes it a lot easier for you to move it around later. So just remember to group your logo once it's complete. Now let's work on this text at the top part. We want to align them following the outline of his head, and I will show you how to do that. First, go ahead and grab a text tool and type in whatever text you want. Then we will switch fonts. Go to the font tab from the property pond on the right. Here we have a list of Adobe fonts available. And this time we'll go with this one called Vivas Nui. It's the one that's vertically long. Place your text somewhere in the left corner for now. We'll work on this curve first. Grab an oval tool and select any color of your choice with no fill. It would be better to choose a color that's easy for you to see. And here we'll create a curve line. It's a horizontal curve. So place it in the right position. Once you have it, select both text and the curve. Slide your pen to multi-select items, so while having them selected, from the third option on the right, find the option that says text on path under the font tab. Tap A, you should be able to place your text according to your curve outline, and the line we had earlier here will be gone now. You can make your text bigger, and adjust the spacing between letters as well. Using this small circle on the left here, you could even place your text inside too. But this time we'll just place it out here. So just go ahead and move it around and place it in the position according to your preferences.
At last, we will place these tags both on the right and left sides. Alright, it's complete. How was it, everyone? Working on this bear might be a bit challenging, but it would be great if you can give it a try a couple times. We can also create stickers after this by transferring the data to the PC and printing it from there, which is what I explained in my previous video. So if you're interested in creating your logo sticker, again, I'll put the link to it in the description down below. Okay, that's all for today. This Illustrator for iPad comes in really handy, and it's definitely worth knowing how to use it. And I've actually done a lot of videos covering this stuff, so make sure you check them out. Also, if you enjoyed this tutorial, hit that like button down below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I make videos on tips and hacks of iPad, so please do that too. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!